Hello, you're watching International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Sudanese forces kill at least two during protests. Canada holds annual march for indigenous women. Protests in Pakistan over disappeared Baloch student. And UN urged to cut ties with Bolore group over rights abuses. Sudanese security forces killed two protesters during another round of nationwide protest on February 14th. The Central Committee of Sudanese Doctors recorded 172 injuries, including 20 from live bullets. Junta forces continued the illegal practice of firing tear gas canisters directly at protesters, injuring 82 people. Five people were also run over by vehicles. Thousands of people took to the streets in at least 17 cities on Monday. Rallies and barricades were organized in places including Blue Nile, Kasala, North Kordofan and South Darfur. Protesters in Khartoum North also crossed over and joined the mobilization in Omdurman. Meanwhile, the march in Khartoum assumed its regular route to the presidential palace as security forces deployed tear gas. Protesters in the northern state also continued the blockade at roads leading to Egypt, which is known to be supporting the junta. Despite an escalating threat of violence, protesters have continued against the junta led by Abdul Fattah al-Burhan. However, a leader of the Empowerment Removal Committee, Mohammed Al-Faki, was arrested by security forces on Monday. Two other members of the organization were also arrested on February 13th. The committee was formed after dictator Omar al-Bashir was ousted by the 2019 December Revolution. It worked to remove members of al-Bashir's Islamist National Congress from state structures. The junta has already reinstated several such members since the October coup. The 31st annual Women's Memorial March was held in Canada on Friday 14th. A thousand people gathered in Vancouver to honour missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls and trans and two spirit people. The march is organised to demand justice and concrete action from those in power. Protesters in Vancouver tore down the statue of a man called John Dayton, which symbolised the oppression and harm caused to Indigenous peoples. Marches were also held in cities including Montreal, Thunder Bay and Winnipeg. The Native Women's Association of Canada has estimated that there could be up to 4,000 missing or murdered Indigenous women and girls in the country. They are seven times more likely than non-Indigenous women to be a victim of murder. Indigenous women are also three times more likely to be victims of violent or sexual assault. Activists have decreed continued inaction and say that cases often go unreported and uninvestigated. In 2019, the National Inquiry on Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls presented its final report. It made 231 recommendations to address what is described as a race-based genocide of Indigenous people. In response, the federal government introduced a national action plan and allocated $2.2 billion over five years to address the crisis. However, activists have argued that the action plan did not contain concrete steps and little progress has been made. Next, we go to Pakistan, where protests are taking place against the alleged enforced disappearance of a student. Abdul Hafiz has been missing from the Khuzdar city in Balochistan since February 8th. His father told the BBC that Hafiz had been teaching children at an education institution. Armed masked men entered the classroom and took him away to an unknown location. Hafiz is an MPhil student in physics at Islamabad's Qued e Azam University. Protests against his disappearance and other cases of unlawful arrests have been held in Khuzdar, Rawalpindi and Islamabad. Enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings in Pakistan have been extensively documented by organizations including the UN. The Voice for Baloch Missing Persons group has documented at least 5,000 cases in Balochistan alone. Rights groups have accused security forces of taking people into custody and then denying all knowledge of their whereabouts. The Human Rights Council of Balochistan reported 67 disappearances and 37 killings in December alone. On February 3rd, the body of another student, Itesham Baloch, was discovered in Panjgur after he had been taken away by unidentified men. According to the Balochistan Post, at least 48 people have been detained in the past 10 days. This surge followed recent attacks on the headquarters of the paramilitary Frontier Corps. The attacks in Panjgur and Noshki were claimed by the Baloch Liberation Army. And finally, 72,000 people have called on the United Nations to end its business with the French Bolloré Group. A petition organized by the Oakland Institute and Rainforest Rescue was delivered to the organization on February 14th. Bolloré has been involved in rubber and palm oil plantations 
through its subsidiary, Sockfin. The company controls nearly 400,000 hectares of concessions in Asia and Africa. Communities in countries like Sierra Leone and Cambodia have repeatedly condemned land, land grabbing and environmental destruction by Sockfin. They have also been subjected to violence, intimidation and arrests. Sockfin has repeatedly also, reportedly also been involved in conflicts with forest communities in the Democratic Republic of Congo and Sao Tome Principe. In 2021, 145 people from Cameroon filed a case against Bolore citing violations of human and environmental rights in palm oil plantations. The petition has asked Bolore to provide documents confirming its ties with Soka Palm via Sockfin. Soka Palm has been accused of polluting local water and blocking access to burial sites. The case was dismissed by a court in France in January. Bolore was also sued in 2019 for failing to uphold commitments to local communities and workers. Sockfin has also been accused of corruption and illegal practices while securing port concessions in Africa. Despite these records, the Bolore Group is paid over $50 million by the UN each year for logistics and other services. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. 